to Plymouth, Massachusetts for the second time. You are coming with us. Why? Because we're going to have a monumental time. Sit back, buckle your seatbelts, and enjoy your birthday. During our history tour in Plymouth, we saw a number of different statues and monuments. Some were made of bronze, some marble, but by far the most impressive of all of them and the most anointed was 81 foot tall, 360,000 pound solid granite national monument to our forefathers, the Pilgrims of the Mayflower. And as the Bible says, for those that have eyes to see and ears to hear, it is an influential masterpiece of righteous principles for our country. The pilgrims went to great lengths to radiate the gospel message and raise a nation under God with liberty and justice for all. A poem that was read at the dedication on August 1st in 1889 reads thus. This monument where virtue, courage, law, and learning sit, calm faith above them grasping holy writ, white hand upraised or beauteous skies, and a pleading finger pointing to the skies by John Boyle O'Reilly. Now towering high in its majestic splendor, the central figure to this monument is faith. She stands upon the main pedestal, one foot resting on a replica of Plymouth Rock. She holds an open Bible in her hand and the scroll of Revelation in her other. The symbolism is to trust in God and his unfailing words written down for us in the Bible. Upon four buttresses are seated figures, symbols of the Christian principles on which the pilgrims founded the government of this great nation, counterclockwise from the east are morality, law, education, and liberty. Morality holds the Ten Commandments in her left hand and the scroll of Revelation in the right. She's flanked by an Old Testament prophet on the one side and the evangelist on the other. Law is tempered with justice on the one hand and mercy on the other. Education is represented with the wisdom of maturity on the one side and youth following experience on the other. Liberty is accompanied by peace on the one side and the overthrow of tyranny on the now, opposite side. Underneath these four buttresses um, are scenes from the pilgrim history. Now underneath morality is the embarkation where the pilgrims were leaving behind their family, their pastor John Robinson. It's a very moving scene as they're looking behind. Underneath of law is a treaty now that treaty represented that 50 year treaty that the pilgrims held with the um, Wampanoag Indians. It was the longest peace treaty that had ever been between a white man and Indians, the pilgrims. This, this matrix had that happen. Now, under education is the compact. Now, what was that Mayflower compact? That was the very first form of true de democratic government. The pilgrims and the strangers, they submitted to themselves and they submitted unto God. Now underneath of liberty, you've got the landing where the pilgrims step from their boat onto Plymouth Rock and into freedom. An awesome quote from Governor William Bradford, one of the pilgrims, on the side of the monument states, thus out of small beginnings, greater things have been produced by his hand that made all things of nothing and gives being to all things that are. And as one small candle may light a thousand, so the light here kindled has shone unto many, yea, in some sort to our whole nation, and let the glorious name of Jehovah have all the praise. To have a deep understanding of the monument, you have to understand the gospel of Jesus you Christ. You are about to hear true stories of individuals who experience this monument life. You're going to hear people tell you their stories, how the monument works for them as individuals. First, they put their faith in God after hearing the evangelist preach the gospel to them. And then the prophet began to work in their souls as the Holy Spirit began to convict them of their past sins. They had a revelation of Jesus Christ. 
and God placed inside of them morality. As the Holy Spirit began to convict them of their past sins, they began to submit to God's justice and turn from a life of crime to God's law, a life obedient to God's word, which is the embodiment of mercy. Bringing to all decent men wholesome moral and civilized laws which make up a good government. You'll see them getting a good education, going back to their youth, and instead of learning from ungodly teachers, they're now learning from their forefathers, their founding fathers, and these real fathers have wisdom coupled with experience with a Christian and biblical way of learning and governing and living free. The result of faith, morality, law, and education is the triumph over tyranny of any kind, causing them to be truly free men and women. Through Jesus Christ's sacrifice on the cross, their sins have been forgiven, and their whole being, mind, will, soul, emotions, thought, personality, has been redefined and transformed with and by the power of the Holy Spirit, each now free from any sin or any person who would make them captives or slaves to them instead of God and God's Word, which is the Holy Bible. The end result is being full of God's love and completely at peace with God, our forefathers, and our founding fathers. Having peace within ourselves and peace in our souls and also peace with everyone else. Russia, and he asked me, he says, well, what we could do to make our country like yours? And I said, the only thing I could tell you is how this country was founded. Okay. They gave their hearts to Jesus. Amen. They built the foundation on God. We have a, uh, we salute the flag as a republic today, not as a monarchy, because right. of men and women who believe in training the children in the Bible so they can learn right from wrong, morality, and religion. Second. Uh, education was really secondary, mm -hmm. but they had to teach them so they could read their own scriptures. So if by chance, uh, like someone said, if we put in the wrong law, these kids who have already graduated from school, taught in the Bible, they could tell what was good law and what's a bad law. And everybody was supposed to be able to know what the laws were, but today there's so many laws, you can't keep track of them all. And it should be based on the law of God. Right. It's true. I mean, when they say something's unconstitutional, that means one thing. It's against God's law, morality, right. and it's against, uh, you can't find it in the Constitution. So that okay. means it's unconstitutional. Okay. Uh, today, they don't teach that. They don't teach that God is the uh, sovereign. God is the foundation. Uh, they say, well, you can worship God any way you want. We've got Muslims in this country, we got Hindus in this country, but you can't go to their country and do you the same can't. thing. You can't. Absolutely not. You get your head chopped off. Uh, They're doing it right now in Iraq. Do you think that we're at a dead end? Do you think we can well, switch it around? I, I don't know. I think it's, it's, uh, the country's gone too far. And they said there's nine points of, uh, or ten points of the country's going under. He's studying nine civilizations. And he said the last two points that a country's going to go under is uh, people being irreligious and uh, homosexuality. Yeah. Not that the cause of the country going under, right. but that's the last two signs Fine. it is going under. Right. I mean, okay. it could have changed around. Yes, God could perform a miracle. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Does it take um, the whole country? No. It only takes one man, yeah. one woman to stand on the word of God and say, that's it. Amen. Amen. What about two young gentlemen from Teen Challenge? Two <laughs> men, gentlemen from Teen Challenge. Wasn't Bradford less than 30 years old? He was. Uh, most of them were very young men. Uh, and during the revolution, it only took 56 for us. 
uh, wow, to, to sign the Constitution, uh, the Declaration of Independence, sorry. But it's men of God who will stand. Uh, right. When Ann Whitney designed the statue of Sam Adams, she designed them with his arms crossed. Because she says that when men or women will come to certain, uh, to their principles and come to the truth, they will never be moved. Oh. And they always cross their arms. Oh, okay, guys, here we go. We've come to the truth. We are not moving. We're standing awesome. on God's word. We're standing on God's word. And when they pledge their lives, their property, their sacred honor, they meant it. You will not find a book in this country or any place else where any one of our founding fathers complained about keeping his word. Wow. 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 They gave their lives to God, they gave their lives to the country, they gave their lives to the family. For wow. the children to have this freedom. So they weren't sending 18 and 19 years off to the revolutionary battlefield. They were laying down their own lives. So if it's if we've gotten so far at a dead end, then historically through the Bible we see what God does when we stop seeking his face. Well one side says dead end. But on the other side, it says stop. <laughs> and people of America need to stop and say, they're going to they're taking us in the wrong direction. Yes. And sometimes it takes you know, to wake up a sleeping giant. Yeah. Mm. Right. Well, and the cool thing is, is that we actually already have a a blueprint in all of the documents and the history and the facts informed by going back to the original documents and reading the words that they said then we will be able to ch make a change. Yes, definitely. My mind has often thought that, like, somehow we need a fresh start. Many people overlook that with children that that is a fresh start. Like, it lies within the family and the start there because so many, there's so many people that come from destroyed families mm. and broken homes. But it's the family unit. Mm -hmm. uh, what made us different than Jamestown in 1607 and the Pilgrims is they brought their families, families with over. them. Mm -hmm. They brought their children with them. Right. It's a family, it's the unit. Benjamin Franklin passed away, he thanked his parents for teaching him. Right. And, um, and gave them the credit. Train up a child when he's young, when he's old and not the popular enough to it. But the end result is God. He's the one that gets the credit. He's the one that gets the glory. It's self-government. If we're not governed inside of our hearts by right. God, Amen. then we're gonna be controlled by the world. Exactly. And that's foundation they knew that once they realized you could read the bible and then they have to go to the king for their salvation what did john adams say our um, our constitution was made solely for a religious and moral people Actually, would you mind giving us your brief test grew up in boston grew up here in charlestown i was one of the many bank robbers here <laughs> actually most of the kids here in charlestown fall under my steps um, not a good uh, testimony itself for the kids uh, but ended up getting uh, caught going to jail and the psychiatrist says well I heard you're a professional bank robber and I said well only professionals don't get caught. <laughs> uh, walking through the prison yard one day God just spoke to my inner ear. I didn't hear him audibly but the inner ear uh, said to me if the next step you take is not for me it'll be your last step. Wow. And I knelt down in prison yard and God's been working on me ever since. Uh, Amen. Right after that I went to Teen Challenge in Brockton in Philadelphia. I work with them and still fun do fundraising for them. Wow. But God receives all the glory. It's uh, through Him that I'm able to evangelize in this costume rather than putting a gun to somebody's face wow. and saying, Give me all your money. Wow. 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 Praise God. God. That's awesome. <laughs> Hi, my name is Jimmy Alexander, and I come from a background of uh, drug addiction. Um, I grew pretty much hated by the world, and Conformed to society and culture taught me how to live for myself and live for pleasure. Uh, it led me to drug addiction and ultimately leading me to death, violence. Um, I was a thief and homeless on the streets. And uh, by the grace of God, I have been saved. Um, I heard the audible voice of God one day and converted over. Um, and now I, I, uh, I'm a follower of Jesus. But uh, during this <laughs> Plymouth Plymouth trip, relate myself to the programs and see that they were uh, great examples, not just examples, but their, um, their faith in God um, and their liberty. Uh, it all started with faith and, uh, and then morality, which um, I can relate to in my walk with Jesus because it started with first faith and then morality, um, something changing inside of me. Um, 
and then law and education where uh, I believe I'm at right now and then uh, ultimately leading to liberty which is being uh, completely free just not free in Christ but being free outwardly and uh, being able to um, live out the Word of God like the programs did and I'm so thankful to be on this trip we come to you today from the forefathers monument calling <laughs> for heartfelt prayers or repentance across this nation this monument symbolizes memorializes God's hand, his founding of our nation. We are calling for a bill, an act of God to turn this nation back on its face. We are calling for a holy appeal, an earthen appeal to all bills, all acts, executive orders, and judicial decisions post Comstock. <laughs> when you see this monument, justice, mercy, liberty, tyranny, education, this is the power, this is the love of God, his reproof, his rebuke, his chastisement is not demoralizing, tis not a weakening, but a strengthening. Seek God's word, read, pray fervently, seek real truth, worldly rebuke. Take that drive today and come out to the monument here in Plymouth, Massachusetts and see for yourself. Come, seek, stand on hallowed ground, but a strengthening of husbands, of wives, of children, of families, of counties, of states, of the country. Come now, eat, seek Christ in any and all things. If you have children, educate them. The elderly, care for them. If they are loving, if they are caring, minister, bear witness unto them. Only to the evil do we say, abandon them. We hereby reprove the hand of tyranny. Love the Lord your God with all thy heart and all thy soul. Take dominion of the earth and subdue it. Be fruitful and multiply. Be thy command. Victory, yes, victory is what that's, I that's see. That's something that, that I wrote following uh, our drives around all these places the other day. And uh, I feel it's from the Lord and he's calling on a nation to repentance. He's calling on a nation to turn from their idols and their wicked evil deeds that they've been brainwashed into and they've been deceived into by the world and for most it's just due to a lack of knowledge it's due to a lack of truth and Christ is here to set them free and they don't have to live that way anymore I've all been set free by God I was abused and molested my whole life and I was 120 pounds and uh, very skinny and weak. In this family, when they first met me, they were frankly concerned for my health and my safety in the situation I was in before. And only Christ could deliver me from all this just brokenness that I was in, brokenness of mind, where you just give up on the world, you give up on yourself. You don't have love for yourself. Because we've been watching these creation videos about how God created the earth, but you can look at the creation and all this stuff around us, but if you don't see God's love for yourself, it's not like you're a worshiper of self, but you know, your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. If you don't truly understand God's love for you and truly read the gospel as God's love for you, because many people in the world they can't love without God without his truth and when you read that as God's real love for us and you take every word every line as truth just let the word speak to you get in the word and God will set you free amen Hi, my name is Ashley um, I am a science teacher in New York State and I got into teaching and then that I needed to pull myself out of it because I started realizing it wasn't God's will. I started to realize how much has been cut out and omitted purposely to try to mold our generation into something they want, into something, um, something not godly. So I had an opportunity to come up here. Leah and Michelle invited me up to Plymouth to get to know a little bit of our history. And I, I knew a little bit of our background as a, as a nation. I knew our, about our godly founding and the pilgrims. So I, I knew bits and pieces, but I was surprised at the amount that's missing from 
that nobody teaches us that mm. we don't know about right and so it was just it, it was amazing to come up here and just have my eyes open to that and just how how much God was in the founding of this mm. country and how it, it was designed by God this country and he was using it for his will and to now see what it's changed and turned into from how we've gotten here from then to how we've gotten now wow is it's just it, it's it's sad it's disturbing mm -hmm. so it's really eye-opening to have been here and I've learned a lot and it definitely makes me want to go and research further and wow. learn further and seek God's will on the future of our country my name is Justin and I came with uh, my family here my new family to mainly learn about the pilgrims and learn what the pilgrims were about and um, the reason that they came here for uh, my background I came from a uh, divorced family and uh, got into drugs smoking weed and drinking and partying really early on and then it led to um, serious heroin addiction it my body has always needed something mm. and I I've always been searching out something mm. to fill me up to mm. make me feel um, good because I didn't feel like I had a purpose mm. I didn't know what my purpose was so I was seeking out, you know, stuff that made me feel good. And now that I have turned my life to God, I want to share that with my future children and my mother and my family. The way I want to live my life, it starts with um, reading the Word and learning how to live from God through the Word of God. But um, aside from that, the people who built this monument built something like amazingly simple mm. for people who don't have the Word of God or maybe for people who aren't um, enough to learn through reading God's Word. People can come to this monument and um, learn how to live. And on the one side of the monument, the first side, it's got four different statues around the monument. The first side is a character named Morality. There's little figures on both sides to represent the prophets of the Old Testament and the evangelists of the New Testament, which is us. We are the evangelists. And then on the back side, there's a, a statue with the name of Law on it. And on one side, it has scales with um, justice, justice and mercy. And then on this side, we have the statue of education with um, youth on the back side of it because it starts with our children, education, and then wisdom on this side, the people with wisdom from God. And then in front of us, the statue, the small statue of liberty, tyranny, and, peace. and then on this side is peace. Hmm. And then all four of those combine with faith being the center monument, the structure, the backbone of all four of those, um, it shows people how to live a godly life. And it shows you, it gives you like all the fundamentals of how to raise up your children mm. and live free and live in liberty and live for God and be bold yes, and strong and endure and, um, and just live with love for everyone, the mm -hmm. love of God. So um, that's pretty much it. This trip has been awesome. <laughs> it's been the most purposeful trip we've ever taken, I've ever taken. I'll never forget it. Amen. Awesome. Amen. Hi guys, Hi. Lee and Michelle here. We're uh, at the Back Forefathers um, Monument this time and we got to bring Justin and Jimmy and Ashley came and um, Matt's on fire. And you know, today we had our last tour with uh, Paul J. Lee and, and Leo, Leo and we just learned so much that we can't even put it into words. And we were even here last year. That we exactly. Got even more, way more this time. Yeah, when I'm here, I think that you guys know where we've been coming from. I think you've seen some of our other videos. Um, this monument, what is what we really get from it, what I've seen in Justin, what I've seen in Jimmy is this monument played out in everyday life. Like yes. you look at the monument and you think, oh, well, that's nice and everything, but I've seen it played out in them. First, they got faith. Then they, they became a moral person and then they had to submit themselves to the law. Then now they're educating themselves. And then 
I see Justin, I see Jimmy, I see Matt, I see these men who were in darkness and they've come to the light, Freedom, the same light of these pilgrims, home. and I know that these are going to be our next statesmen. You know, they're not the guys who went, ha they didn't have perfect families growing up, they didn't have a, a, a straight A's in school, and you know what, we went to Harvard yesterday, and uh, that's, that's where they got their, edu their education, they stepped foot on Harvard and they said, you know what? You have taken God out of this place, and we're going to bring God back to this country. And this is our generation, and we're going to take it back. We're going to do what the pilgrims did. One thing you that know? Leo said was he wants to say to the youth, you know, um, that the draw, the ball got dropped at some yes. point. And he says that the youth need to pick it up, and they certainly have have picked it up. And it's a heavy ball. It's kind of gotten bigger and bigger and bigger. Yeah. What's with the with the debt and the oppression and the sin, um, but they will pick it up. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and cast all that evil into the sea and carry the cross um, to, the, to the nations. You yeah, know? and I think that this is what can bring revival to our country. The, 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 the makers of liberty, it worked for the pilgrims. Jimmy said the other day, you know, how, how can this world change? And Jimmy's like, of course it did. The pilgrims, they came over here and they changed, they changed the world, the entire world, right. these, this band of pilgrims. And they were, they were different than the Puritans in that they, I believe that they, they held law and religion, just an equal balances, and, and they were they did it perfectly. They were kind. They used, if you listen to the stories, they had mercy. They had justice and they had mercy. You know, they tell the stories of two pilgrim guys. They were in a duel over um, two women, and and, and uh, or they, the two guys were in a duel over a, a, a woman, and it was legal to duel. So Governor Bradford illegal tied them back to back like this and they had to do like this for 20, 24 hours until they, they, got, they got tired and they started down. to really go down, down, down and they begged for mercy. It was supposed to be for 24 hours. And then hours. Bradford gave them mercy. An hour later or whatever, there's mercy with the pilgrims. There's mercy with our constitution. There's mercy with our Declaration of Independence. And we can get back to these principles. We went to Boston, we saw Paul Revere, uh, Paul Revere's house and um, you know, the, the first parish church where they put the uh, little lantern up there, the one if by land, two if by sea. And you know, these guys, they didn't send 18 and 19 year olds to battle. They fought battles in their own backyard and we need men and women who are willing to do like the pilgrims and willing to do like the founders, the John Adams and the Abigail Adams. The reason their uh, love letters are so intense is because they, they they were one. What did he say about my my? Other he was self? he he writes as uh, frequently, but he was writing about a friend to Abigail, and he says, "Say hello, you know, to himself, his other self, and his other little selves." Yeah, and their you families know. were just together, and they were fighting for country. And our country is going way south. We have no morality. Nobody, you think you have education, you really don't. Our law is torn to shreds. They have stamped. They have. Our president today is stomping on the Constitution, ripping it to shreds, the Declaration of Independence. Nothing is standing anymore. And we need people to go back. Okay, we're just going to go back to this matrix let's of regroup. liberty. Let's regroup and let's let's start individually. But it's not going to take, okay, 51. 51 people survived that right. first winter. Right. And it's not going to take the entire nation to just all of a sudden turn. We it only takes you. a few to just need you. get down just on, your get on your knees and to follow these principles here um, and start with your own family like Justin said earlier today um, get a fresh start yeah. with the next generation raise up your children in the way that they should go and right. when they're old they won't depart from it so I think right. that wraps it up I hate to have a all these things are bad how do we get back to it you know how do we change the country we get asked that question all the time I this think once a answer. week I get asked that question at this least the answer. the answer is to get in the Word of God Get and to it. train your children no matter what. It's all between, well, the, the whole Bible encompasses God's purpose is for the family. It's for a father and a mother and children that create the next generation of people to worship God. Yeah. That is why we are put on this earth. So if you're not creating and protecting that next generation, then you aren't doing what is pleasing to the Lord. Yeah. So how do we change the country? It's so simple. Get back, grab your children, Keep them to you. So teaching Train them, them up. When they are old, send them out. So here's the thing. That the, the pilgrims, they you got to go back to your, your, your number one educational book has got to be the Bible. It's got to be the foundation. Everything, whether you're science, literature, everything's got to stem from the Bible. If your education doesn't stem from the Bible, you might as well just just throw it away because it's, it's, it's of no use. And that's what the pilgrims do. They were highly intelligent, highly educated people. Um, but first they started with their faith incredible incredible faith in the midst of all odds um, they were very moral people um, they knew how to create a law according to the law of God 
educate their children according to the Word of God, and they created liberty. And, and if you are at all able, come here. Come here. This feels like home to me. It We've does. been here twice now, and this feels like home. Come here. Come to the monument. Start with Leo's tour. Go to the Jenny um, Museum. And we will have right here. Click right here. Yes. Um, and follow the information that we have there for you. Um, You're to, not going to be able to pr appreciate uh, Plymouth unless you take Leo's tours. Yes. So we love you from America's hometown, from my hometown, to yours. Yeah. Okay. Stay tuned on the Leah and Michelle YouTube channel for more videos right, coming soon. Home.